When King Leoric came to court, he brought many nobles with him, and nobles, oddly enough, want noble crypts. So I showed up with my shovel, thinking to make easy profit by digging a few holes. Ha! There's no stopping their demands around here. Now, I eat, sleep, and breathe dirt, it seems. The local Khazra tribes have become a serious threat. They attack caravans and are moving into areas where they haven't been seen before. We need you to take care of this problem for us. We'll pay 25 gold pieces for every Khazra head you bring back. For many years, villagers were too afraid to settle near the ruins of the cursed town Tristram. But as time went by, adventurers arrived to loot the old cathedral, and their business was profitable enough that new Tristram sprang up to accommodate them. Fewer travelers visit now, though, and the town is mostly populated by craftsmen and farmers. The rumors of torture and worse grow every day. What has happened to Tristram and its king? I once thought Leoric a great man, but it seems I was deceived. We all were. He sends our meager army against Westmarch on the morrow. What will become of us? My loutish companions have no curiosity about the Khazra. They're only interested in the bounty on their heads. But I am convinced the Khazra can be communicated with. It is dangerous, to be sure, but it is a risk I am willing to take. The world stone has been changed. Our children are born weak and suffer short lives. The demon Nereza promised to restore their power, but instead turned them into misshapen creatures and sent them to war against us. We may die but not before she is sent back to the Burning Hells. The cold ground welcomes the foul bodies of these cruel men. They sought to prolong their lives through forbidden magic at great and cruel cost to others. Their evil fed on itself until it consumed them all, and they found themselves at the end of a hangman's rope. Though New Tristram and the fields surrounding it have been resettled over the years, the highlands remain empty save for the crumbling ruins of Leoric's old outposts. The king built more than one watchtower in his paranoia, but now they cannot even ward away goatmen and wild beasts. A tragedy, really. Everyone is dead. Bilard, that damn fool, was killed trying to communicate with the Khosra, and then the cultists showed up. As soon as I saw them, I ran. I wanted no part of their dark magic. I heard the screams of my companions, but there was nothing I could do to help. Our enemies are legion, but they will not take us without a fight. We must hold them here while the keys to the Holy Temple are hidden away from their leader, the fiend Nereza. Resolve must not falter, though we would surely die to the last man. We were so sure we could beat whatever traps the ancients had laid for tomb robbers, but the dead bodies of my friends testify to the folly of our arrogance. I will be dead soon as well. Our greed was our downfall. Chancellor Eamon, it is of the utmost importance that we secure my manor from the traitorous rabble in Tristram. The caves to the east are too close to my land. They must be blocked, completely obstructed. I believe the Archbishop Lazarus has magically bound some arachnids of late. They may serve us well. Royal Guard, with great pain, I must admit that our king is no longer able to separate reason from madness. He orders the caverns to be filled with the Archbishop's monstrous creations and will hear nothing else. Perhaps the legendary ancients themselves once dwelled there, but now we must desecrate their ruins. While exploring a cave with hopes of finding hidden treasure, I came upon a most grisly sight, a heap of dead bodies. Unbelievably, 
As I was searching them for any items of value, they began to rise. I must tell them of this and new Tristram before it's too late. The Tristram fields are fair lands, fertile and temperate. Superstitious farmers kept away from them for quite a while after the fall of old Tristram. But time has persuaded them to abandon these ridiculous notions and take up the hoe and plough once more. Now they supply crops to both new Tristram and Wortham. Alaric says that our people can survive the coming battle, but I saw the truth in his eyes. Why did he order me to guard the Beacon of Honor? Those shambling things are slaughtering my people in the forest above, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. I returned to Condorus after twenty years, the burden of countless failures and tragedies heaped upon my shoulders. Am I being punished for helping that stranger hunt the Dark Wanderer? I always thought Deckard Cain half a madman, but perhaps he was right. Perhaps he can banish the shadow hanging over my life. The time of my lord's true awakening is at hand. That fool, the Auric, was only able to resist him because he did not yet possess his full power. With the Queen dispatched as a traitor, I may now devote myself fully to preparing the boy for the presence of my master. Magda is a fool. I will raise an army of souls from these primitives and chain them to my invincible will. Yes, with these heathens at my command, the kingdoms of the world shall bow to the might of the Lord of Goats! I may have to work on the title a bit more. I need more bodies. You think my summoners can just conjure up a demon whenever it pleases them? We must have blood. Fresh blood, mind you and human flesh to bolster our magic. I will be expecting a reply from you shortly. There is a new piece to the game. A girl named Leah. My spies tell me she is the child of the witch Adria, who is hiding in the deserts of Chaldeum. Bring this news to the master at once. Of all the abominable stalling, in case it was not clear, I need the sacrifices now! I've heard enough of your idle complaints that the villagers have fled from the highlands, leaving no one left to sacrifice. You'd best come up with something, or it's your hide will be flaying. Mistress, it is my pleasure to report that I have broken the prisoners from Wortham. Words have flowed from their mouths like blood from a wound. Our summoners can retrieve the weapon at your command, and the enemy shall be none the wiser. The king has gone mad. Executing anyone his paranoid eye falls on. None of us are safe. 13th day of Lunasad, 1263, Yano Kyrgyzstani. The Javis... <laughs> Burned runes into my flesh. They say all the torture and dark magic will turn us into demonic slaves for King Leoric. What foolish lies. Seventeenth day of Lunasad. Oh, pain is terrible. I can't think. I'm so hungry. Twentieth uh, day of Lunasad. Uh, master. These cowardly farmers have been leaving the fields for days now, but I'm not about to follow them. My home is here, and a few angry goatmen won't change that. Aiden came to me last night. I suspected what was lurking within his troubled heart. I consoled him as best I could. Regardless, wherever he's headed, hell will surely follow in his wake. The shadows close in on Tristram once again, but like Aiden, I'll be gone before they fall.
I can no longer deny the true nature of the evil that rises from the depths of the cathedral. It is almost too horrible to admit the truth of it. It is the Dark Lord of Terror, Diablo himself, who plagues us. The vile staff of Lazarus was brought to me today, confirming my suspicions. There is no longer any doubt that Lazarus kidnapped Albrecht, and perhaps even freed Diablo from his ancient prison. Who knows what further treachery he has planned. We have come at last to Tristram's old cathedral. This is where Diablo, Lord of Terror, first corrupted mankind. This is where I may finally find the answers I seek. Leah worries after my safety, but I believe information vital to defeating the last lords of the Burning Hells can be found here. I wish that Leia could live a different life, a more normal life. But alas, such is not her fate. When I pass, there is none but her to continue my work, and the future of this world hangs in the balance. Praise the powers that be. Griswold, bless his dear heart, risked everything to bring that dear boy home from the cathedral. Though he is troubled and moody now, I am certain it will pass, and he will once again be the sweet wort we all love. I'm not quite sure what all the fuss is about. Few farmers turn up dead, and everyone goes running for the hills. I've lived off these lands for twenty years, and I have not seen any bloodthirsty monsters running about. <laughs> no reason I should leave a perfectly good harvest. Ogden and his wife have offered to let me and Grandmother continue to stay with them. I think we will, now that the troubles are over. I am still tormented by horrific nightmares. I keep hoping they will fade, but they seem to be getting stronger. To think I was once afraid of Adria. She is going to take me to Chaldeum with her soon. Chaldeum? I never thought to see it with my own eyes. Though it saddens me to leave Ogden and his wife, Adria assures me that she will find a cure for my nightmares. I used to be one of them, ordinary, untouched, until her voice came to me. Then I knew how I must serve. I must kill the one who threatens my mistress and the dark power that created her. I have been chosen. Wanted. One relic, scarlet, roughly the size of a man's fist. It was stolen two months past during a deplorable theft from the Merchant's Guild Bank. Those apprehended were not in possession of the item. Uh, the relic is greatly missed by its rightful owner, or who offers a reward for its safe return. My name is Lakdanon, and I am cursed. Once the captain of King the Oryx army, I left only to honor my land and my king. No man has a greater love for his king than I had for mine, even as I drove my blade through his dark and corrupted heart. It was Lazarus. Of that I am certain. He alone had the king's ear and whispered dark and evil magics into it, instilling the notion of an imminent attack by Westmarch, afraid to speak against the archbishop. The councillors nodded their empty heads in agreement, and sent us off to die. When we returned from our horrific defeat in Westmarch, my beloved king lost all pretense of sanity. He seethed with rage, spitting curses upon us as traitors. With great sorrow, I ran him through. I will forever live in anguish for my last attempt to honor my king. As we lay him to rest in his burial chamber, he manifested as a hideous skeletal demon. Gorash and my other knights were overcome at once, but I fought on. And now I wander, cursed by my once beloved king. Evil gnaws at my bones, and I cannot risk putting my beloved Tristram in danger should I fail to contain that which tears at me. 
I must venture down into the labyrinth to die alone. We've been under siege for six days now. Uncle Deckard is still missing. Captain Rumford and the others are losing hope. I tell them not to lose faith. But if help doesn't arrive soon... A miracle has happened. A hero, like one out of Uncle Deckard's tales, appeared and saved us. I know in my heart that my uncle still lives, and I pray that the hero will bring him home safely. Uncle Deckard is home, rescued from the clutches of the Skeleton King. I'm so glad. But the Skeleton King? I thought he was a folktale. The idea of Mad King Leoric returning to torture this place. Hasn't Tristram suffered enough? I can hardly believe it, but the Falling Star is a man. When Uncle Deckard realized this, he was crushed. I know he was hoping for something more... Miraculous. Uncle Deckard believes the key to unlocking the stranger's memory is reassembling his sword. I wish I could say this was another of Uncle's crazy theories, but I can't deny that these ominous events are starting to really scare me. When we retrieved the stranger's second sword piece, Magda found us. She's always on our heels. Who is she? She claims to know my mother, but how could that be? Regardless, we must beat her to wear them in the final piece of the sword. Uncle Deckard is gone forever. I remember the wonderful times we had together. Always off on another crazy quest. What will I do without him? He believed the stranger was an angel. But he is only a man. I always knew they were just stories. Uncle Decker died for those stories. We have just arrived in Tristram, and I must say, I'm a bit dismayed. This place is a backwater filled with serfs and an ancient broken-down monastery, hardly fit for the King of Condorus. I cannot fathom why Lazarus was so intent on this becoming our new seat of power. A fetid, pallid malaise has fallen over the manor we now call home. Young Albrecht seems to be enjoying himself in our new home, however. Perhaps I am simply suffering from an imbalance of humors brought on by the recent change of clime. I am convinced that some malevolent being is attempting to wrest control of my thoughts away from me. Voices direct me to horrendous acts, and there are times when I seem unable to control my body. Lazarus knows. This is certain. He looks at me strangely when he thinks me otherwise disposed. Though my counsel begs me to reconsider, I will continue with the executions of those I find guilty of plotting against the kingdom. Perhaps they fear my eye will fall on them and discover their heinous, treasonous plans as well. Lazarus is the only one I can still trust. I have finally rid myself of the dark influence seeking to subdue me. And now I see things as they truly are. This conspiracy among the insolent townsfolk to weaken me by stealing Albrecht away will not stand. Perhaps the heads of their women and children on pikes will bring them clarity. I had heard the rumors, but I thought them just fancies of bored women. Until I saw them dragging people through the streets today. Our own citizens! Has the world gone mad? My dearest Heydrich, do not feel despair, my love. You did everything you could. Our time together meant more than words can say. But in the end, fate is a cruel mistress. Your strength is needed to end the horrors that beset this world. My final wish is that you find your path. Love always. Mira. Long I have labored to master the dark arts. Now I finally reap the rewards. For Magda has acknowledged me. She promised me a special task that will bring endless glory to the Great One. 
I can hardly rest until she reveals it on the morrow. Goatman. All of my labours were for a bunch of rotten, stinking goatmen. Magda claims that they will become our most valuable allies, and that the task is one that she can entrust to no one but me. But I know my place. I am most bruisingly humbled. Enslaving the goatmen was easier than I anticipated. My magic seemed to reignite the savagery deep within them, and they flocked to me in hordes. A few escaped, those who understood the fate of their people. But they are too weak to counter my spells. <laughs> the Moon Clan attacks at my command. There's chaos everywhere, and word in town is that Lakdanin killed the king. If only this is true, perhaps our days and nights of living in terror are behind us now. One of the men retrieved a strange artifact in his nets. It looked like a hilt of an ancient blade, but I know it must be more. The fisherman argued with me, but I convinced him to leave it in the safety of the chapel, a holy place for a holy relic. When the church of the Zakarum sent me here, I assumed that my village would be simple and untroubled. To be honest, I was relieved. Corruption has struck down many a greater man than I, and such a quiet place could have been my salvation. But everything changed when disaster struck the Tristram Cathedral. Starved of the sun, I no longer know what day it is. I can hear the warden, my husband, and that dog Lazarus discussing my fate. My life will be over soon. Yet I fear more for my poor Albrecht's future in the wake of his father's madness. If only Aiden were here. This scabbard is a rare treasure. Its inscription reads Talek the Defender in archaic lettering. He was one of the ancients who guarded Mount Ariat until the shattering of the World Stone. A true warrior who gave his life to spare the world from the dark fate it has fallen to now. After much searching, I have found a promising lead. A family near New Tristram has obtained a valuable relic, and poor fools that they are, they haven't the slightest idea what to do with it. I have some idea of what to do with their daughter, though. <laughs> and through her, I'll get my prize. The Zakarum High Priests in Korast proclaimed Leoric King of Condurus many years ago. He ruled well until Diablo's influence drove him mad, and the loyal knight, Lach Danon, was forced to slay him. Afterward, Diablo himself raised Leoric from the dead as the Skeleton King, until the monarch's son, Aiden, vanquished him. We should have known. The farmers left over a fortnight ago, and yet we stayed. Last night... We heard the beasts creeping closer. My husband left to investigate, and I haven't seen him since. All I have left are the things we made together. Hopefully, they are of more use to someone else. 